Hello. I uh, haven't recorded a video in over a month. I think the last one, the last sort of blog one that I recorded was in July after I finished my workshop. And I filmed the Scullion unboxing. Uh, but yeah, I haven't recorded anything or done any kind of updates. So here I am. It is the first week of September. It's September 6th. Uh, tomorrow is Labor Day, and so it's a long weekend, although we had orientation for CCS on Saturday, so all the new students are here. They've all quarantined for two weeks, and um, they all showed up for orientation and got to see campus and go over all the lay of the land and whatnot, and so that was really fun. But I have a ton of updates for AOK. -okay. Um, <laughs> it's just been such a busy whirlwind all of August just like flew by. Like, you really can't believe it. Um, but I got my edits back from Andrew and uh, they were amazing. <laughs> uh, his feedback was really fantastic and um, just really covered all, all aspects of my book, the different themes, the arcs of the different characters, uh, things like pacing, uh, panels that were confusing or unnecessary. Uh, if there was even uh, line editing, so I used um and o oh and hey too many times. I was like, yeah, take that out, take that out, take that out. You know, stuff like that that you just don't even realize that you're doing when you're writing. Um, yeah, he was fantastic about pointing that kind of stuff out. And so, yeah, it was it was a little overwhelming. So I read through all of his his notes. It was an email with like typed out notes, and then it was a PDF my PDF of the thumbnails with uh, like post-it things throughout them on d different pages. And so I read all of it, all of the written part first, I let it sink in for a day, then the next day I read through the PDF and I let that sink in. And then I read it all again and I took my own notes and really tried to process everything that was um, being said. And, and he pointed out positive stuff as well, jokes that he liked. Um, moments that he thought were cute and whatnot, and so that was nice. It wasn't all just like, fix all this stuff, you did it wrong. <laughs> uh, but it was a lot, you know, it was a lot to think of, especially because uh, there was an instance where he thought I could combine two characters that I actually hadn't considered, uh, and it made a ton of sense and it was super easy to do, and I just, it was something I couldn't see until somebody pointed it out. And, yeah, so his his feedback was fantastic, and uh, there was also feedback from Rose Pluler, who I believe is an assistant editor or editor at Harper Alley as well. Um, and he, he went on vacation like right after he sent me the notes, so I had like a week to really think about them and uh, try to just you know envision how I might change things and if I disagreed with any of his notes. Um, some of which I did. I, you know, there was some notes about like the sister, main character's sister's story arc and whether it felt a little unnecessary. And I, you know, wanted to show some conflicts and things arising that didn't have anything directly to do with the main character. I think it kind of shows this very grounded, real-world kind of relationship. Um, but it wasn't directly related to like the acne plot and and Jay's like main storyline, but. I feel like it really adds like a, it shows the relationship between the this brother and sister, and uh, I really wanted to keep it in there. So, I've I haven't turned in a new draft yet, um, but I had a meeting with Andrew and Rose, which was fantastic. It was kind of the first time we'd all <laughs> had a meeting together. Weirdly enough, like I was just writing and writing and writing for months, and they were kind of like, okay, well, like you know, let us know when you're done, and so. Finally, I was done and we had a meeting and um, I'm sure we would have met had the pandemic not happened. I might have, you know, been in New York for some reason or other. And But anyway, uh, so it was a f the first time we met. We went over the notes and talked about all sorts of things. And um, they do still want the book to come out relatively at the same time. And so uh, they want to do an advanced reader copy similar to what happened with Scully. And you can see here this red spine. This was the advanced reader copy. So. Um, like the back cover is different. It has like marketing information. So they want to do something similar for A-OK. -okay. Um, but I don't know that it'll be full color like this one was. Um, simply because of 
it depends on how fast I can work. <laughs> uh, but I showed him my pencils from Scullion, and he was like, okay, your pencils are super tight, so if you at least had all the line art done, we could print that and then a handful of like completely finished inked and colored pages. Uh, but I have to get the deadline for when they would need those files by. And like I said, I'm still working on uh, the edits. So I've gone through, I printed out a copy of, of my book. You can kind of see this, this is just like a fake cover that I made for it just so that it would have a, a cover image on it. Um, oh my God, it's the stack just like doesn't, <laughs> doesn't stay stacked anymore. Um, but I printed it out and I, when I was reading through the notes, I was like marking things and uh, there were more post-it notes and I removed them as I fixed things and uh, yeah, I was kind of just going through here. It was a little easier just to deal with it on paper and kind of consolidate the notes from myself, from his email, from the PDF and have them all in one place. And I had taken notes also during the phone or the video conference meeting that we had. So there's a lot to kind of get through. I did all the like little things and all of the, the line edits and uh, changing of panels or adding a new transition or, uh, yeah, there were a, a couple of like tiny panels that he recommended, like it felt like unnecessary and it was something that I had did a lot in the beginning of the story and then kind of dropped off later on. And so to be a little more um, consistent and the little panels kind of slow things down and so he wanted it to uh, not to slow down too much. And then there was a cool note. So with this page, this little sequence up here, which is uh, Jay's like morning routine and all the different steps he has to take with all the different skincare products. He was like, you know, I feel like this could be like a whole page on its own. Um, so taking like these little panels and, you know, expanding it out and giving the, changing up the pacing a little bit. And so this is a page, you can see my little pink check mark. This is one that I, that I did there that I already changed. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been a lot. And then, then once I did all the little things, I had to think about the bigger things, which was like character arcs and uh, what's kind of missing from the story or what needs to be developed more. And uh, one thing was to ramp up the conflict between Jay, um, the main character, and Brace, his best friend. And so I have a bunch of notes. Um, oops. So many post-it notes, they're all falling off. Um, but these are a bunch of my notes um, on that. Yeah, and every time I would just have like a, some little idea that might be a thing that I could try out to see if it fits in the story, I would just write it down and, you know, put it in a pile so I could go through them all as I'm reading through the story again and be like, oh, could I, is this idea for a scene? Does this make sense to kind of, um, fix these issues in the story and so I've gone through my my PDF on the computer has like the most up-to-date version and so I've been going through now and there's seven spots where I'm like okay this is where I have to insert something this is where I have to insert something and so yeah I have a couple little uh couple more things I got to do um and then I got to turn it in and hit the ground running with penciling and inking. Uh, hopefully there won't be too many more changes after this new draft goes back. Uh, of course, like I want the story to be right, uh, which is what I said in my meeting, and so whatever it takes, you know, to make it the best version it could possibly be. Uh, obviously we'll take the time to do that, but uh, we're also on a deadline, so, <laughs> you know, there's only so much time to work with. Well, another thing that happened was that he introduced me to the a creative director and the, there's a designer assigned to my book so we're already talking about the cover they apparently at the publisher had been talking about the cover of AOK -okay for weeks and then they're like all right now we want to bring you in and uh you know any ideas you have and they sent me some ideas that they had concocted which was super cool to just kind of not even have to um put my brain power into thinking about what the cover of the book should be. I mean, I had the one image and certainly I've been thinking about it, uh, but to have them just send me like five really good ideas, I was like, wow, it's, it's kind of nice to already have options and already have the gears turning on what it can be. And, uh, and funny enough, the, my favorite of the group is also Andrew's favorite and uh, 
the publisher's favorite, and so uh, I drew my own version of it, and I drew another one, and I'll probably doodle out a couple other ideas before I send it to them next week, but it's so crazy seeing the cover. It feels like really real and uh, <laughs> so, so crazy. I don't know. It just, uh, it feels like the, um, we're really off to the races, like, I don't know, I just seeing the cover and thinking about the cover and knowing that I have to finish the cover really soon and uh, that we're gonna have to test out different colors and what works and what do we like and what do we don't like. And uh, it's, it's really fun, but it also, yeah, it's like this, this book is happening. <laughs> like get on the train because the train's leaving the station. Uh, so I mean, can't wait, uh, but it's also overwhelming. And uh, yeah, this week will be the first week of classes. So um, I'll be going in and out of the office. Like I can go back uh, to my office at work, but I have to wear a mask the whole time while I'm there. And I can work remotely still. And so I have to find the balance of how often I want to be there and what time. Obviously I'm, I'll make myself available to students whenever they need my help, but it may be more of a scheduled thing than me just being down there five hours a day the mask on because that doesn't sound very pleasant uh, when I can just stay home and I'm a two minute walk away and uh, I can just work remotely and go in when I need to so still figuring that out but I am excited to have new people in town and I'm doing this thing this year called uh, fam fam groups we've done it before at CCS it's it's like faculty advisee mentorship or something like that uh, where it's a faculty or staff member a second year student and then five first year students so I'm excited to see what might come of that um, yeah I've never done anything like that before it's funny when I'm I forgot like I feel like I'm a pretty I'm not I wouldn't say that I'm extroverted but I'm definitely like outgoing like I won't if somebody talks to me, it's not that I won't be, like, silent in response. But when I meet a lot of people all at once, I do tend to be very quiet. And I always forget that, like, every year uh, orientation comes around and I, like, introduce myself to people and whatnot. But then when it was, like, this group and then everybody's new, I'm just like, oh, I'm the group leader, but I feel really shy right now. <laughs> um, but it was fine. We all had we had lunch in the park, and it was really nice. It was a beautiful weekend, all weekend long. So I couldn't have had orientation on a better time. And uh, yeah, That's pretty much, pretty much it. I'm gonna go. I just got an email. I'm gonna be talking about pitching uh, later on this semester at CCS, probably in October. I'm gonna go in and be on a panel with some other um, alumni talking about pitching for different um, circumstances. Uh, my, I, mine will probably concern uh, graphic novel pitches, but some people have done stuff for the Nib, some people have done stuff for the New Yorker, and so uh, it'll be lots of different perspectives on what to include, what worked, what didn't work, um, different experiences, you know, all of that's great, a uh, great opportunity for the students to learn from. And uh, yeah, so I just gotta, Got to wrap up these edits. Hopefully tomorrow, I'm kind of going to work on it since I have tomorrow off um, and uh, try to get them done the first part of this week. I'm almost finished, so I feel like I'm, I'm really close to being done and I want to get the new draft of them so they have enough time to read over it. They'll probably need like a week or so and, and uh, get the cover stuff to them. And yeah. So all I got. I forgot to mention that uh, my roommate is sadly moving out. Um, she's been amazing to live with for three years. I can't believe it's been three years. Um, so I'm sad that she's leaving, but I can now afford this apartment on my own. And so I'm converting her bedroom into my own living room and studio. Because if you remember from an earlier video, my apartment is really weird and does not have a living room space. Uh, the person who lived here previously lived alone, and so one of the rooms was a living room. And now I get to return it to its previous state, and uh, I've ordered a couch, and I'm moving 
the table in there. I'm going to have my computer and everything will be in a separate room. I'll have, that'll be my, my workspace. There's more windows in her room. It's really nice and sunny and I'm so excited. I cannot tell you how excited I am to not have to zoom from my bedroom and work in my bedroom and draw in here and everything in here. Just to have a separate space is like so incredible and I'm I'm really grateful that I'm able to uh, afford this apartment and make this change because especially if we do have to go quarantining again uh, or if I travel somewhere and I have to quarantine for that reason uh, I'm just so grateful that I have more spaces to be in um, oh, it's so exciting I repainted my bathroom and I repainted my kitchen that's part of why I've just been so busy and I haven't recorded any videos uh, my it just everything is kind of getting a refresh and I'm so happy about it so uh, yeah, so in the future, my videos might be recorded in a brand new, um, lovely studio living room, which hopefully will turn out the way I envision it, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, yeah, exciting.